Dang, so if I told you to sing a Christian song right now, could you do it? I got just a tiny thing. Da -na 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 -na. What's up everyone? Today we are with Noel. Hi. He's joining us today on Sidewalk Talk and yeah. So tell me about your background. You grew up in Austin, Texas. Yeah. What was that like? Um, so I was born and raised in Austin, Texas and growing up I started doing like violin and piano from an early age. Very Asian. Yeah, like when I was like five. <laughs> Um, but I also like grew up in church too, so I did oh. a lot of like church music type stuff. Oh, yeah. So like the typical like church instruments, so like guitar, drums, like singing, you know. Did you lead the group or like did you have yeah. a, what is that called? I was the worship leader. You were? Yeah. Wait, actually? Oh. Yeah. I, like people actually don't really talk about this, but there is like a worship leader to EDM producer pipeline. It's, it's really common. Who else? you know was uh, like tsunami like some oh, other people yeah because <laughs> like, it's like if you were like into music at that time like it kind of makes sense that you like wanted to continue doing like other music stuff yeah you know, like, without, um, like in college or whatever yeah. oh wow and then so you're playing piano and did you like playing it or your parents forced you my parents forced me okay. for sure um but i i liked it and i was good at it so it i definitely liked like the prestige they gave me <laughs> branches but i didn't like practicing Ew. i liked i actually liked the church music stuff a lot more because it's more like social right because you're Interesting. you're like in a band like playing yeah. in a band is so fun you're just like jamming with friends you know and then also because like the music is more simple and I don't know if you know too much about like Christian music, but it's basically pop music. Okay. Like the like the structure of okay. it. And oh, okay. It sounds like very upbeat. Pop well, like the chord progressions and stuff. And like the type of instrumentation, it sounds like two thousands, early two thousands pop music. And it still sounds like that. But like that kind of got me more into pop music. So yeah. in middle school I bought my first like DAW and I would just like record myself like singing and like playing guitar. And that's oh, like wow. kind of like my first like production experience. Oh, yeah. okay. Dang, so if I told you to sing a Christian song right now, could you do it? I got just a dark, tiny thing. Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> Holy shit, okay, so it's like more like upbeat, like. Yeah, it's super upbeat and. Happy, it, uplifting? It sounds a lot like melodic dubstep too. <gasps> like people say, like, <laughs> Elenium. From church to melodic dubstep, real quick. Yeah, like a, a lot of people say, like, Elenium and like Seven Lions, it sounds like Christian music. Oh. Like, because it's like the same feeling. I feel like yeah. they're going for the same feeling, like that euphoric, oh. like, yes, like, woo, like that feeling. And like, there are certain, like, melodies and chord progressions that like, tend to create those feelings. Mm. And so, like, they both arrived at like the same conclusion to like use this kind of chord or this kind of melody to like, yeah. get that euphoric feeling. It's very interesting hearing how, like, you. I guess deconstruct a song because yeah. you start it from like the beginning the story and then how it ends and like progresses I don't know that's very interesting yeah so there's definitely a lot of similar there's so many similar similarities with like raving and yeah. like church <laughs> honestly because one of like the first like really big concerts that I went to in middle school was like this like Christian concert mm. and then like I remember there I was like feeling amazing so euphoric and like oh, it was like I was like oh my god this is amazing yeah and then like in college I went to like the, the, my first ray for the first time which was beyond wonderland and, and I felt the same <laughs> the same feeling you know yeah. and like growing up like you tell yourself like oh like that's god like that feeling is god. <laughs> but it's just good music you know so would you say oh I guess growing up now so what would you say raving is to you it's it's just like it's like that same feeling that you get from church of like euphoria and like being part of something bigger like mm -hmm. without any of like the judgment or like the rules that come with it yeah you know? i see and like i think that's what kept me going to church for so long was the music do you, you still know? go to church no oh um but like all the way through like end of high school i was still like involved with like the band and stuff like that just because i liked doing that it was really yeah. fun to like do the, do the music stuff oh wow and 
And when did you start transitioning into EDM? So after that first rave, Beyond Wonderland, my freshman year, <laughs> Uh, with, <laughs> and I went to with my DSP friends. <laughs> Shout out to DSP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, I basically like yeah downloaded like Ableton that summer, and mm -hmm. I like just like started just working on some stuff. And by this time, I had already had a lot of um, experience with producing in like high school, but it was mostly like huh. pop music and like covers oh, wow. and stuff. It's a very seamless transition. Yeah, I would I would I like record myself like playing guitar and like doing covers. So when did you start taking producing more seriously? Were you just doing it all throughout college? Um, yeah, I was doing it like all the time in college and I also started like DJing in college as well just like for parties and stuff. Frat know, parties? Was, yeah, I was in a frat so like they needed they needed someone. Dude, there's a lot of bunnies in this neighborhood. We see them all the so time. Cute. <laughs> so they needed someone to like, my frat needed someone to like play music at the parties, you know? So I was like, okay, I'll step it up. You know, I, I'll try, yeah. like, try to learn how to do this. <laughs> so you were the token DJ? I was like the frat DJ. Oh my god. But like it gave me a lot of experience yeah. with like working with crowds and like mm. um, you know like just like learning more music and just like trying to read the crowd and try, just um like see what they like and like see their reactions and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh wow. And then it's kind of like how Zoo came from college DJ, right? Yeah, I think he used to USC, right? USC, yeah. It's pretty crazy. And and then uh, my sophomore year summer, I got an internship at Dimock. Oh shit. With um, Steve Aoki and like speaking of Zoo, he also worked at <laughs> Dimock. It's actually like a really common like yeah. thing in LA. Like, yeah. There's a lot of like DJs that like live in LA that like their first like music industry thing was like Dimock oh. because it's like one of the most it's like easily a accessible like first mm -hmm. internships to get. But that was really cool because like it really broadened my horizons in terms yeah. of like music and like I discovered so many artists at yeah. that time. And it's funny because like the artists that I was discovering at the time are like the top EDM artists today. You know, it was like Rez, E. Kali, oh, like Son Holo, you know. Yeah. But at that time they were just like SoundCloud uh, people. I and see. it's crazy to see that now, like after so many years, they're like the, the biggest artists. Wow. And then where did your name come from? Like uh, when did you come up with that name? Okay, so I think I came up with it around like junior year. I was actually in a duo, like freshman oh, and sophomore year. Okay. Um, but it ended up not really working out just because we were looking for like different things in music. You know? mm, I see. Um, so after that duo, like after we broke up, <laughs> <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so, so dramatic. Yeah, it was. It was. It was emotional for me too. Aww. But after we broke up, um, we, I basically, I was like, okay, I need to think of like my my solo project, and I like spent mm. a lot of time like brainstorming like different ideas, and then eventually I settled on Null because it it represents. So, in statistics, like a Null <laughs> set is like. Um, a section of information that doesn't have anything in it so like like you, you, know, oh, you like can have null n-u-l-l -L. exactly okay yeah you can have like a set of numbers but a null set is just like a space that doesn't have anything in it and that ah. o in null it it means the same thing like if you just write that by itself it means like a null set interesting yeah and so that's why like my label and like my branding is called like empty set like empty set records okay and oh, wow. it's like my space to fill with creativity it's like an empty space oh, basically. i like that empty That's... space yeah okay that made so much more sense yeah when i first saw your name i thought you're like a scandinavian guy because it's a very like yeah scandinavian thing to do <laughs> but at that time i didn't even realize that was that i was just like oh, okay like this is the same symbol it means the same thing then i was just like combined like like n-u-l-l like null with and like, you were yeah. a math biz business major you said yeah i was a biz econ major and you do nothing to do with math now yeah <laughs> but I, I learned a lot about like like the business side mm -hmm. you know of like marketing and stuff like that yeah which like i apply all the time in, oh, okay like music still applicable yeah still applicable oh wow and then when did you start going full-time with your project so um after college i i knew i wanted to like pursue this like fully you know and i knew i wanted to like give everything i got to to music and i had gotten some traction some streams at the time i think i had a couple of like suicide sheep releases in okay. college um so i was like okay i'm gonna move home like save money just like work on music and i like decided i was like okay i'm gonna do a release every week mm -hmm. i mean not every week sorry that's crazy 
a release every month and at that time I was doing everything so I was Jeez. making the visuals I was oh my gosh. Um, making all the songs doing all the marketing like I had no manager you know and it was like so the one man show yeah it was so hard especially like the visuals Jeez. because I, I just picked up making visuals like at that time it oh wasn't like God. I had been doing it like in college yeah I just I just picked it up and so I was like learning how to do that at the same time while like making the music Jeez. and it was a really good experience yeah. but I didn't really like grow too much at the mm. time like I was barely making the releases happen wow because it was like such a tight so schedule everything. yeah, yeah it was such a tight finish. schedule I didn't really spend time to like work on my art mm. or like get better at like making music I was just like making it just yeah. to make it you know I see so what changed the, what changed was the pandemic oh. <laughs> um, actually that, that was the case for a lot of people yeah yeah and like the the pandemic changed so much so before the pandemic most of my income that i was making was like mixing and mastering for other artists mm. and like producing for other artists um and then right when the the pandemic hit i basically like lost all my clients Jeez. because like no one really wanted to like spend money on yeah. like mixing or whatever like you things know? that they don't really need exactly exactly I see. and then so at that time i decided to make like a massive pivot I was like, okay, I want to pivot into film scoring. Mm. And then so I started studying like orchestration and film scoring like heavily. Oh. And I had been playing violin like my whole life, but I kind of like put that aside for EDM for like six uh, years. Or, okay. And then, but then I like came back to it. Interesting. You know? So at the beginning of the pandemic, I started working a lot with like strings and like composition mm -hmm. and like just like movie, like film scoring stuff. Um, and then, eventually i started getting gigs with like video game oh, cool. film scoring which yeah. is or not film scoring, video game scoring yeah uh, which is like it's the same like it's like the same style mm -hmm. as like film scoring but it's just for video games yeah i, I worked with this company in china that um uh, they like like uh, Chinese video game companies approach them and then oh, they're like we need so and so music for this like level okay? yeah and then they have like a team of composers that they, oh, they work cool. with and then like I'll like make it for them yeah and then that started going really well and oh. then so I was like okay I need to like combine it with what I was already doing with EDM mm -hmm. so I decided to like my own like music to start making it more like cinematic like orchestral oh, like just combining like the video game stuff that i was yeah. doing with my like releases and then huh. that's kind of like how i found my niche because it's like a little bit different than yeah. what everyone else is doing oh wow um like orchestral edm um <laughs> And yeah, it all came from like the video game stuff in the be beginning of the pandemic. So I know you mentioned some of the challenges that you faced um, into getting to where you are today. Would you say that was like the biggest challenges or have you had other challenges that really um, I guess you struggled with? Yeah, that was a really, the pandemic was a really big challenge because right before the pandemic, I felt like I had enough traction to like start touring basically and then like I had like, this whole plan I was like okay I'm gonna tour you know I'm gonna make this money I want to move out of my parents house you know and yeah. then like it just like didn't really work out mm. but like I'm so glad that it happened or else I because I wouldn't have found like the video game scoring stuff you know that led to you to where you are today basically yeah, yeah. okay and I saw that you had a couple releases are you working on new music or what yeah so I'm actually in the middle of like my album rollout oh. um, I just dropped the first single to my album it's called afterlife I'm in the middle of my my album rollout it's called afterlife and this is basically an album that I have been working on since the beginning of the pandemic um, and it all stems from like this orchestral stuff so at that time like I knew I had like this concept for this orchestral album mm -hmm. but I didn't really have like the skills to execute it and it took all of those video game gigs yeah. and like practice of just like putting in the work just like composing 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 until like so over the span of the past two years i like worked on this album on the side basically mm. while i was doing video game stuff okay. and now finally like now that i'm like playing shows and touring it's like finally time to do everything together you know release, release the songs the album, yeah. yeah and then uh, align it with the tours like promote it together and stuff like that yeah are you touring right now yeah so 
Um, I just got on the tour with Elefante, mm. and we've been playing a couple shows this weekend or oh, last nice. weekend. We just played in DC, and it's, it's like Elefante, Huang, Sabai, and then at the end of the month, we have a show in LA at the Palladium. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's, it's big like, one. Yeah, Yetep as well. Oh, so okay, okay, like, yeah. Um, Elefante, Yetep, Huang, Sabai, yeah. Oh, wow. And I know you mentioned that you moved back to your parents. Have they been supporting you throughout this whole journey or what has that been like? Um, yeah, it's tough because yeah, I have Asian parents, <laughs> but my mom has always been like really strict on music because you know oh, she pushed she pushed me to like play instruments my whole life. Yeah, and she like, was really strict about like, practicing a lot and. Um, like going to competitions and like just being like on top of my game so like when I wanted to make the transition to different kinds of music like even though she didn't really understand it like she knew that this was like a continuation of what I was already doing Interesting. and I feel like she still doesn't really understand yeah <laughs> like EDM but it's okay because like she's seeing that like I have like more success now I see and honestly like she still is pretty strict <laughs> about like music like she'll like she'll always like ask like what I'm doing like mm. she like talks about like my branding we talk about branding together like we oh, like, wow. plan stuff like that is, like, is your mom in a creative field too no she's just oh. uh she's just my mom she, oh. <laughs> she's just been she's just been pushing me my whole life so it, it hasn't stopped wow oh yeah. that's good though it sounds like she supports you yeah she and definitely pushes she, you to do your best yeah yeah for sure Wow. Um, and I've, I've kind of like found my own path away from like classical music, which I grew up on. Um, but yeah, it's a little, it's different now. It's more like film scoring stuff. What are you looking to do in the future? Like, is your goal to just become an artist and really more, like really, I guess, champion the orchestral EDM? So yeah, that's like what I'm doing right now, orchestral EDM. But I, I kind of already know like 10 years maybe like 15 years down the line like i know i want to be in film score oh, like wow my so you daily... want to go back to are you still doing it so you're not doing film scoring now right oh i'm doing like video game i want to do like legit film scoring for like oh, big see. like big movies you know like I'm, oh. I'm like a small time guy right now you know? yeah um and because i feel like that's the type of lifestyle that i'm more looking for is like being able to like just like work from like the studio in your mm. home and just like compose you know rather than like the constant travel that comes with like touring and stuff oh you know? so you, you do like touring or you like is it like a love hate relationship i love touring because you said you wanted to tour and now you're like i don't want to tour <laughs> I, I love touring i don't like travel that much but i like <laughs> i know I, i'm like i want to do it right now but i when know like yeah when mm. i'm young i, like, I want to like you know have fun explore the world but i know like 15 years in the future when I have a family I still want to do music obviously like I want to do music my entire life yeah but like a different like kind of music you know interesting so touring is fun for now yeah oh. and I just like kind of want to see like where it takes me yeah but I've already like put in the plan into motion to like transition into film scoring which I'm trying to do through the video game stuff through like my own music yeah. and hopefully like I can make like a bigger name with my music and then leverage that into like getting mm. like good film scoring gigs, gigs. Yeah. yeah wow have you had any crazy things happen to you on tour well, um at my first stop in sunnyvale mm. um for like this elefante tour i like brought a bunch of merch actually and i like had it ready at for like the end of the show yeah and i was going to like throw it into the crowd oh cool and then i like th i threw it into the crowd <laughs> At the after the show, this li this like girl came up to me, and she like confronted me for not throwing it into her direction. What? <laughs> How did she find you, first of all? Some somehow, <laughs> and then she was like, she was like, oh, you didn't see me. I was right there. You should have threw it right at me. And I was like, okay, maybe you should have had more energy next time, <laughs> and then I will have noticed you. <laughs> and she, she just walked away. Yeah. What? <laughs> I think she was just like, that's so at least you know if your fans are passionate yeah about your merch and yeah. they really want to get it so that's <laughs> that's a good thing yeah. <laughs> dang okay and then i guess is there anything else that you want to talk about before i ask you 
one last question <laughs> um yeah i'm like really excited for like this summer because i have like a couple of festivals coming up Ooh, what festivals um audio autistic is the first one okay and then i'm playing interstellar fest in kentucky I didn't um, know Kentucky had festivals. Dude, it's actually, you should check out the lineup, it's crazy. Really? Lineup. Yeah, it's like Seven Lions, like... I'll take a look after this. Um, like, I didn't expect it. I was like, oh, for Kentucky, this is like crazy. Called? It's called Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah. Mm. And then I'm playing this festival, Ill Fest in Austin. And then oh, in back September... Back to Austin? Yeah, that's my, my hometown. And then in September, I'm playing the Lost in Dreams Festival in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. So you have a stacked festival lineup coming up. Yeah, so this is going to be a pretty busy summer make sure you catch him if you're attending any of those festivals yeah audio autistic <laughs> is the next one so that's uh it's also the closest one <laughs> it will be my first festival so your first what do you mean by first festival? by performing first oh festival that's your performing. first festival yeah that's exciting yeah. are I've you nervous played, like, yeah, sure, up until now. i'm i am nervous but i'm excited wow honestly like i'm excited to just like be at the festival are you gonna like roam around the grounds and stuff too yeah yeah Rez is playing like Ooh. by day, so I'm like really excited to see her because I haven't had seen her before. Oh. oh my god, first festival. That's exciting. And then before that it's just been shows. Yeah. And then summer's gonna be all festivals. Yeah. And then when does your tour end? Um so the the Palladium show is on June 3rd, and then the next day there's another show in SF, same um, tour, so we have to like book it to SF oh, the next day Dang. <laughs> but that's that would be like the last stop so okay June 4th, yeah oh wow dang summer's gonna be a uh, fun yeah <laughs> and then so like my album is also coming out um throughout this so the next single of my album is going to be this month and then mm. the album finally is going to come out july 8th july 8th so like yeah. everything is out so like right before audio autistic actually oh we, so you tour. could play your album or do a whole set around the album then yeah that's kind of like what i've been like planning is yeah. like up until now i've been playing just like regular dj sets so just like kind of playing bangers like back to back mm -hmm. and stuff like that but now i'm like trying to do more like all original sets um, because, visuals yeah because i have like my album i have like a lot more songs like coming out yeah so i'm i'm just trying to like play a lot more of my music and like less of other people's music but i'm like yeah. finally getting there i can pretty much play like an 80 percent original set at oh, this point wow. um just like have a couple songs in between to transition mm -hmm. between them um so that will be a little bit different than for me because i feel like when you play like more original music especially like people music that people haven't heard before let's say like an id yeah like people don't really know like how to react. react yeah and like from my perspective like you want people to like go crazy and like mm -hmm. they always go crazy if they hear something that they, they know. know yeah but like if it's something they're hearing for the first time they're kind of like, like what is this they're just kind of like processing it yeah you know like and not, that doesn't mean it's bad or like they don't like it you know but they're just kind of like listening and they're like oh okay like this is like kind of absorbing it for the first time mm -hmm. yeah, but that's okay like they don't have to go crazy yeah i mean you're at a festival so everyone's gonna be playing popular songs anyway so why not be someone different yeah yeah wow it's exciting dang okay and I have one last question for you. Uh, what do you want to be remembered for? So the reason why I like film music specifically mm. is because the music is the most important part of the emotional reaction to a film. So like any like scene that you're in, like your emotional state is dictated by the music. So if it's like, scary, like the music will be scary. If it's like action, the music will have that. If it's sad, like the music will be sad. And yeah. if you don't have that music, like the emotion is not there. So that's kind of what I'm trying to implement in my own music. Yeah. Is like use the chords and the and the music to influence the emotion, but like in an EDM way, you know? <laughs> like take that from from film and then put it into EDM. So that's what, kind of what I remember. Just about. like evoking emotion from people. Yeah. And it and like it can be any emotion and it can be like an aggressive one too you know like yeah. anger or like whatever like raging <laughs> aggressive angry dang that's crazy i feel like with the at the rate that you're going you could basically token the whole orchestral edm i guess there is another guy who is like actually a huge inspiration of mine apache he's kind of doing like orchestral edm as well but he's kind of doing more like classical 
music specifically mm, and I, that's I what I've been trying to get away from <laughs> like he, he does like classical like Mozart and then into like dubstep yeah okay but I, I use like orchestration but I think my style is more like cinematic yeah so it's like movie oh wow stuff yeah it's very not cool really trying to do classical music anymore. yeah <laughs> dang it's like from you're like over it since you're like yeah, yeah you grew yeah, up with it yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for jumping on Sidewalk Talk today, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>